you. Thank you. Peace with you. Gosh, so many friends here. It's so nice to see all of you. And you're getting me so emotional before I have to speak about cancer. So anyway, welcome to the White House. And, um, you know, certain words have the power to make time stop. Malignant, aggressive, terminal, cancer. Like a spell, they still the air around us. Frozen in place, we feel the world we knew slipping away. In the span of a breath, a thousand questions fill our minds. What can I do? How do I tell people? Why did this happen? And when the hands of the clock begin to move once again, we are not the person we once were, but someone changed. A mother imagining all of the things she might not be there to teach her daughters. A husband wondering how he will juggle chemotherapy appointments with work and childcare. A son trying to be strong for the parents who could outlive him. It's not just patience. Cancer changes everyone it touches. And in some ways, it touches us all. For Joe and me, it has stolen our joy. It left us broken in our grief. But through that pain, we found purpose. Strengthening our fortitude for this fight to end cancer as we know it. <laughs> almost, almost 30 years ago, Four of my friends were diagnosed with breast cancer in one year, and one of my dear friends, Winnie, lost her battle. Winnie inspired me to take up the cause of prevention and education. And since then, I've seen the darkness of this disease, financial devastation, confusion over care, and far too many families mourning loved ones. Yet, I've also seen hope. In just this last year, I met a woman whose life was saved by determined nurses who just wouldn't let her skip her screening. I met a doctor who was inspired to become a cancer researcher because she survived her own diagnosis as a child. I've seen people come together from rival companies or opposite political parties, sharing knowledge and finding common cause, united by the chance to save lives. A cancer diagnosis today may still leave us feeling hopeless, but we are not hopeless and we are not helpless. We are living in a golden age of research and discovery. We can end this terror and all of us have a role to play. Because this isn't just about hoping that one person will decipher the answers alone. It's about listening to patients and survivors and their families and easing the burden they face. It's about the individual choices we can make to stop this disease before it's too late to get screenings, to be vigilant with our health. It's about federal and state governments, the business community, and nonprofit organizations all helping to make those screenings more available and accessible. It's about bringing the brightest minds and the fiercest hearts to the table to learn and to collaborate and to discover together, yes, Cancer has the power to rewrite our lives, but we have the power too. More than we even know, 
we can stop it in its tracks. We can comfort and discover and dream our way past its paralysis. We can come together and rewrite the story that cancer tells. Now, as your first lady, I'm deeply proud to be a partner in the commitments we're making to the cancer moonshot today. We're ensuring that all of our government is ready to get to work. We're going to break down the walls that hold research back. We're going to bring the best of our nation together. Patients, survivors, caregivers, researchers, doctors, and advocates, all of you, so that we can get this done. And I want you to know that I'll be there working right beside you. So I'm so honored to welcome all of you here to the White House today to take this next step. Together, we will give Americans a reason to hope. We will use this power of this White House to make your life better. And we will build a future where the word cancer forever loses its power. Thank you. my pleasure to welcome our next speaker. Vice President Harris knows the heartache of cancer, but she also knows how much hope can be found in our scientific community. She knows it because she saw it firsthand in her brilliant mother who dedicated her life to researching breast cancer. Kamala, you honor your mom's memory every single day, but I believe she's especially proud of you today. Please welcome the Vice President of the United States, Kamala Harris. Dr. Jill Biden. Please have a seat. Please have a seat. First Lady Dr. Jill Biden, President Joe Biden, thank you both for your incredible and long standing leadership on an issue of national importance, yes, and of personal significance to so many of us, including me. So as Dr. Biden said, uh, you know, my whole life I stood witness as my mother, a scientist, worked to end, a, end breast cancer. So my mother taught at public universities. She worked at a national laboratory. She published groundbreaking research. She was a peer reviewer at the National Institutes of Health, NIH and collaborated with scientists around the world, including in France, Italy, and Canada. My mother's discoveries helped save women's lives. And I am so proud that she brought our nation and our world closer to the goal of ending breast cancer as we know it. And today we are closer than we have ever been. Since the turn of the century, we have made significant breakthroughs. We have learned so much about therapeutics and diagnostics, about public health and patient care. More people are surviving cancer. More people are enduring cancer after being diagnosed than ever before. And the death rate for cancer has fallen by about 25% over the past 20 years. In a moment, our president will lay out the new goals, ambitious goals, achievable goals for our nation to end cancer as we know it. These goals are not abstract. 
and they will transform lives. They will improve lives and they will save lives. So I said at the outset that this is an issue of personal significance to so many and for me. You see, after a lifetime working to end cancer, cancer ended my mother's life. I will never forget the day that she sat my sister and me down and told us she had been diagnosed with colon cancer. It was one of the worst days of my life. And an experience that, sadly, millions and millions of people in our country have had. My mother was a fighter, all five feet of her. You would have thought she was seven feet, but she was only five. And as I cared for her during those many months, I watched her courageous fight. But after countless rounds of chemo, her body gave out. She was transferred from the hospital to hospice. And in fact, one of the last questions she asked the hospice nurse was, are my daughters going to be okay? I miss my mother every day, and I carry her memory with me wherever I go. When President Biden launched his cancer moonshot five years ago, I, of course, thought of my mother. We may not have ended cancer as we know it, not then, but there is still so much work to do, and we are so much closer. The president's cancer moonshot demonstrates who he, our president, is. Because as you all know, out of his personal pain, he launched an initiative, this initiative, that will help countless lives, the lives of people he may never meet. This initiative also demonstrates who we are as a nation. In America, we not only dream, we do. We not only see what can be, we see where we can go in a way that when we reach for the moon, we plant our flag on it. So it is now my honor to introduce another leader who for many years has worked tirelessly in the lab and the clinic in that spirit. From Emory University School of Medicine, Dr. Ajay Andam. Thank you. these new pandemic rituals, the taking off the mask at the podium, I'm getting used to it. Thank you, Vice President Harris. It is an honor to be here with you and to follow the path paved by your mother and all the brilliant researchers that came before and whose shoulders, shoulders we stand upon. To the First Lady, thank you for your empathy and for truly understanding the pain and the promise that is this fight. I am thrilled to be able to be here to introduce someone that many of us consider to be the country's patient advocate in chief, President Joe Biden. From my vantage point as a neurosurgeon scientist, constantly thinking of ways to treat cancer patients, to fight cancer, and seeing countless patients every year, and as a board member of the National Brain Tumor Society, I can confidently say that this is the most exciting moment in the history of our field. As a, physician, as a physician today, when seeing patients with aggressive cancers like metastatic melanoma or lung cancer, I know that many more of them will see durable remissions after treatments with therapies that harness the body's immune system to fight their cancer. As a researcher, I know that NIH has created grants targeting brilliant young investigators, yes, that's, that's me, <laughs> that encourage us uh, to take risks and chart new directions for our work. As an advocate, knowing that there is a president who is throwing the full weight of the presidency behind this effort means that even between big announcements like this one, all levers of government are being pulled to create a brighter future 
for cancer patients. This is also an exciting moment for me personally because I'm here. As a son of Ghanaian immigrants who came to the United States with nothing, there was a time when I could not participate in the scientific discussion in the United States. We have a ways to go before we're harnessing all of the diverse talents of our country. People of every race, ability, gender, gender and orientation. But the progress that we have made means that we're constantly bringing new ideas to this challenge. I stand here as a husband to Kelly, a father to Joseph, who's nine, and Emily, six, to tell you that this is a moment to believe in a healthier future for all families, to believe that we can end cancer as we know it, to believe in science, and to believe in America. 